How shocking the vast majority of Christians, their theologians, their scholars and lay members, all others today are totally oblivious to who gave the world Good Friday and Easter. Those with rudimentary scriptural knowledge believe that the Bible has the answer for who gave the world Good Friday crucifixion and Easter. They quote scriptures, specifically scripture like the Gospel of Mark 15.42 that says, And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a member of the council, who was also himself looking forward to the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. But there has never been a man that ever walked the earth in human form of any race, creed, or color by the name of Jesus Christ, also known as Serapis. You can read the book, The Historical Origin of Christianity by Dr. Walter Williams. You can also discover from our book, Free from God, the making of a deity, the first Jesus, where we know that in ancient Hamid, the common deities like Ausari and the bull Apisa were literally infused together at the behest of Ptolemy to make a Serapis, a Greek version that later morphed as Jesus Christ in the Roman Empire. In our book, Free from God, unveiling spirituality that breeds wisdom, we show the African Jesus, Horesu, Jigahute, and also Ura. You can note the sun on both the heads. They call it the halo as a sign for holiness. But the Europeans, the Romans, the Greeks also had their own Jesus. Even the Russians have recently unveiled the most famous types of the Jesus that they have worshipped across the ages. Also, Jesus the Jew is clearly understood to have existed. Therefore, since everyone knows that Jesus was crucified on Good Friday, which one of all these was crucified? And who has the authority to teach and who has had the power to enforce the doctrine that this is the Jesus that was crucified for mankind. Throughout centuries, throughout the ages, throughout all times that people have come in contact with this deity, they remember and think that the crucifixion was on the Friday before Easter Sunday. But is that day, Friday, correct? Is it possible that according to the script that we have received today called the New Testament, the crucifixion and the true chronology of it, of Christ's crucifixion and resurrection could have been on Wednesday as taught by the churches that have come out of Herbert W. Armstrong's Worldwide Church of God. It is clear that Good Friday, in certain aspects and in certain sections of Christianity, is venerated for that which was on the cross, not the cross itself. But we know that the cross was empty for almost 900 years until a Pope came and said, remove the lamb, the dove, the fish that was on the cross and put a human being who was a European. James A. Water, in an article entitled Holy Week Chronology, Passion History, in the Journal of Biblical Literature, mentions that numerous Catholic writers for centuries maintained that Jesus ate the Passover Tuesday night and that early Wednesday morning he was taken by the Jewish mob and later crucified by the Romans. Throughout the whole history, the term Good Friday became popular in the 13th century. It was known as Long Friday, Lang Friday, or Great Friday. In Latin, it was Feria Sexta in Parascave, meaning Friday of Preparation, similar to the Passion of Friday, reflecting the doctrine that was then imposed of the crucifixion of a non-living Jesus Christ. I think, since we have proved that Good Friday and Easter Sunday are of human, not divine origins, who gave us Good Friday and Easter Sunday? There is a clear historical connection between the actions of the Roman Emperor Constantine, the Council of Nicaea, which he established himself and the establishment of Christian doctrines and practices including the establishment of Easter celebrations and the formulation of the Christological dogma. Very, very, very important because the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD 
took a vote that made Jesus divine. Before that, he was not divine. He did not even exist. It is very, very important to understand that Christianity as we know it today is a result of a vote that was taken by men with no women present in the year AD 325. Before that, there was nothing like the Orthodox Christians believe or taught that has been adopted today. It was in the summer of AD 325 that Constantine invited bishops from across his empire to his vacation house in the Turkish town of Nice in an attempt to find common ground on what historians now refer to as the Aryan controversy. We shall come to that very shortly. And then that's where Jesus was declared divine by a vote. That's what you believe today. The Nicene Creed formulated at the Nicene Council of Nicene in 325 AD addressed the key theological controversies of the time, including the nature of Jesus, his divinity, and this creed was formed to counter another creed, another teaching, another doctrine that was as old as this argument that was presented at that time that denied the full divinity of Jesus. It is known as the Aryan controversy. What does it say? It says Christ was not of the same substance as God the Father, but a creature made in time. So Aryan knew about the making of Jesus Christ based on Ausari Osiris Apis a fig. It was very, very clear that those who formulate the doctrine, the orthodox doctrine, the counter doctrine of Christ fully divinity and of the same substance as God the Father are the ones that gave the world Good Friday and Easter Sunday. If you believe in these two holidays, you are following the orthodox belief that Jesus Christ is fully divine and of the same substance as God the Father, which was formulated and affirmed by the Nicene Creed in 325 AD. Before that, it never existed. This Nicene Creed was a result of debates and arguments to counter Arianism that says there is no God who is known as Jesus Christ because if ever existed, is a creature made in time. That was a doctrine that was giving them headaches. This same council went on further to standardize Christianity as we know it today by giving it its holidays like Easter celebration as well as Good Friday, unifying Christian communities and uh, by force of military power of the Roman Emperor established this common liturgical calendar that you follow today with the canon regarding the celebration of Easter known as Canon 7 or Canon 20 if you come from the Eastern Orthodox churches. At the same time, during that time, Easter came in because Constantine as a sun worshipper who also followed Agnetian beliefs of this sign you shall conquer also established Easter, the worship of the sun and many other deities connected with uh, the veneration of the sun. This indeed is clear historical proof that the actions of Roman emperors, particularly Constantine and his decisions, formulated the early church, gave the early church its impetus, and shaped early Christianity up to today, and established Good Friday and Easter holidays. And at the same time, they also quashed another determination of this Easter, the Quadrodostomen controversy which arose early in the church over the date of celebrating Easter, those who came from a Jewish perspective wanted the 14th day of Nisan to be aligned with Easter so that they can celebrate the death of their Savior. Easter takes place on the first Sunday after the first full moon after March 21st. Very critical and very, very important. Like Christmas, Easter is pagan. It didn't originate from a divine source in the sense of the real and noble creator. And uh, it was only during Constantine's time that it became associated with Jesus. But which Jesus? Because we know he never existed. So it is the Jesus that was created by some other people. The biggest problem is the problem of sin. And uh, thinking that you can sin against the noble creator. 
you can't because there's a hazim because the anobu creator is not a spirit nor a physical being so how can you sin against such you can only sin against nature against our ancestors against the divinities against yourself but you can not sin against the real creator it is impossible if you follow the good friday easter sunday spirituality you are a catholic you are not an african because no real african is a christian or a muslim you can watch our video of the same title and uh, you can also discover the african holidays that includes the resurrection day on the 25th of march and its meaning and how it was celebrated in ancient times and it includes the 10 days of the end of march which are the harvest days where we celebrate our harvest thanksgiving days and uh, holy ancestors day which will come a month later or a few weeks later but who gave the world good friday and easter sunday i think the answer has been given clearly it is the roman catholic church because the roman catholic church owns the bible the bible that you read today is a catholic book you can read the same book that writes and explains that by jim akin and also Good Friday and Easter Sunday are holidays associated with citizens of the Roman Empire. I am not a Roman Empire. I therefore do not recognize them as such, whatever the case is. You have to return to your culture. For our own culture as Bantus and Melan and Dominican people are very powerful. They know that. Because King Leopold wrote a letter. That we have been featuring on our videos this letter was written to colonial missionaries in 1883 so all that you hear of as prophets african melanin dominant prophets preachers teachers founders of ministries pentecostal churches these are following missionaries they are no longer africans when you see a, an african preacher that african preacher is african only in skin but in spirit is a Catholic, in spirit is a European, in spirit the ancestor of that person is King Leopold II of Belgium and the Papas and all these Constantine and founders of Christianity. They say, according to this letter, they knew what we could do if we follow our own culture because there is no redemption outside your culture. African traditions are as powerful or even more powerful than anything else because they are original connected to ancient deities and divinities and right up to the Hazim. King Leopold says your knowledge of the gospel will allow you to find text ordering and encouraging your followers to love poverty it will be happier if they are poor it is very difficult for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven but they are the richest anyway you have to detach from them and make them disrespect everything which gives courage to affront us your culture your identity that is what christianity is teaching and all these pastors you see the black pastors african pastors are teaching you to disrespect your culture because if you think they are not teaching that tell them that you want to worship your ancestors you want to worship your deities they will tell you not to and they tell you to worship the european deity created by the nicene council I make reference to their mystic system. So this king knew the mystic system. If we had kept that mystic system and our war fetish protection, we would never have been colonized. But they said, you must do everything in your power to make it disappear. And we were deceived and we made it disappear. Now we are as weak is meal so subscribe to our channel to learn more and also like our videos leave a comment your hammer manager to be priest by ellen to miss the jaganja says to learn more send us an email on jen at marifado or dot com let's work together and let's know our holy days and our mystic systems and our war fetishes these are the things that will cause us to be powerful again nothing else
that will give us a system of power than these three that I am elaborating on. Our mystic system, our war fetish, and uh, the power of our identity and the culture. Amen.